did you serve? World War II. And what was your branch of service? What was your branch of service? The infantry. In the U.S. Army. In the right. U.S. Army. Okay. Um, what was your highest rank? Private. And in what general locations did you serve? Europe. Europe. Were you drafted or did you enlist? I really, say, say I was drafted. Okay. And where were you living at the time when you were in drafted? The, I, in Washington Heights, New York City, New York. Okay. Do you recall the date when you were drafted or when you enlisted? No. no. no? It had to be close to my birthday, I can tell you that. Oh, okay. Why do you say close to your birthday? Why do you say close to your birthday? Well, because you couldn't have registered till I was 18. Okay, okay. Um, and why did you join? Because it was a thing to do. We were at war. Okay. And why did you pick the service branch? Why did you choose the Army? I really don't remember, but I have to assume that that was the one that... The gate that was open, <laughs> that's the gate I walked through. Okay. Um, tell me about your first days in the service during basic training. They sent me down to Camp Blanding, Florida. Okay. For basic training there. And how, how, tell me about those basic training days. How did it feel? Well, you know, they, they were typical, you know, in, in a cot and get up and go in the field and it was hot and it was sweaty and... And you marched and you this and you that. The one thing I always remember, that the first day or two there, they said to us, one of the things you were going to do was walk with a full field pack for 30 miles in one day. Wow. And I said to myself, they must be crazy. But they weren't. <laughs> wow. It, it did work out that way. There was a one day where we did a 30-mile march with a full field pack. Wow. And we were trained. I, I trained in the... Uh, What's, what's the word? In the Pioneer Battalion. Pioneer Battalion? Never heard of Which, that. Which uh, very few people seem to know of. But it, it wasn't exactly an infantry. They, they, we worked with mines, you know, how to lay them, how to de disarm them, a few other things. Uh, some engineering, we, we learned how to build the, fix a road, cut down a tree, swing it, a jeep across a, uh, a creek. Uh, it was a semi-engineering job, I guess you could call it. Okay, interesting. But, uh, you know, you asked me to go back 70 years, it's a little difficult. What I know was not that, that straight infantry type. Did I shoot a rifle? Yeah, I shot a rifle. Did I hit the target? Yes, I hit the target. <laughs> <laughs> That's about it. Okay, good. Do you remember any of your instructors? No, I, no. one of the things that bothers me today is that I just don't remember any names anymore. Okay. It's 70 years ago. It's 70 years ago. Um, did you meet any, um, do you remember any of the fellows that you met and you trained with? No, I can't They were say from it. all over. Yeah. I can't say. I, my memory on it is, has okay. slowly but surely faded away. Okay. But I like to remember Pioneer Battalion. You did remember some in engineers. And how'd you get through it? Got up every day, did what you had to do, and went to bed. Good. Um, after boot camp, where did you go? Europe. Europe. Um, how did you get there? A boat. A ship, okay. <laughs> A liberty ship. Okay. What were your first impressions when you got to Europe? Well, that was when I suddenly found out I was a... Uh, going to be a radio operator, okay. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I was the only one. I uh, I lost contact at that point with everybody else. I worked with total strangers, and uh, I don't remember. You just did what you had to do. Uh, I was a radio operator. I probably knew more about radios than all of the others were there, but I, you know, that's, what am I going to tell you? Do I, can I prove it or not? What I did know was the one thing that surprised them was that they asked me if I could drive, and I said yes, and they said wonderful. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they, they evidently in those days, evidently there were not that many people of eighteen, let's say, who could drive. Right. Where and how I did, I I don't remember, but I I was a I knew how to drive. 
And uh, that's how I ended up with uh, the radio in the uh, in the Jeep. Wow. Aunt Tilly taught you how to drive. Aunt Tilly ha taught you how to drive? Well, uh, my, my, my aunt used to take us out driving, and I used to sit next to her and ask questions and watch her and study other things. And that's probably how I learned to drive as a young son. Wonderful. Where did she take you driving? Oh, well, you see, she used to take, take my cousin and I on day, day trips, sit to New England and near that, you know, just, just normal family type of thing. Wonderful. Wonderful. Um, and then what did you, tell me, tell me again about um, the radio operator, what they asked you about, um, what you knew about using. Well, it was a ham radio operator. A ham cool. radio operator. If you, if you didn't know what a ham radio operator was, forget it. It was an amateur radio operator. Right. They still have them, but today there's no need because, I mean, we worked with a key, you know, dots and dashes. Yes. Today everybody can talk. It's a it's nothing. And what was the question they asked you? Um, if How do you fix something? How do you trim a condenser? Trim a condenser. Never forget that. Okay. That's a good memory. <laughs> Um, so your assignment in Europe was the radio operator. Right. Okay. And then where did you go throughout your service as a radio operator? Through Europe, France. Oh. I, I, I really don't remember. They didn't tell you. <laughs> okay. You went wherever they sent you. Okay. But and, I know. Um, so as you, went from, well, as you went from place to place throughout Europe and France... Did they did they send you with other troops? Oh yeah, with uh, with my troop, with the your troop, cavalry recon troop. Okay. Um, what would be a typical day for you in the service as a radio operator? Would you drive your jeep to different locations and accompany the troops? You did whatever they told you to do. If they told you to take this message from here to there. If they wanted you to try and get somebody on the radio, you did whatever they told you to do. You did. It, it was just normal. Like I can't say, say anything particular. Okay. And so, um, when you when you were the radio operator, did you communicate with other divisions or commanders? Or? Yeah, I, I don't remember very okay. honestly who I spoke to, but I'm sure I did. <laughs> okay. But, you know, it, I, I really don't remember who I called or spoke to or what or where. I don't think Captain came over and said, here, just said this or do that. I did it. That's okay. All. And did you did you do it as you as a ham operator? Did you do it with Oh, no, ham radio. Thing? I had nothing to do with it from then on. I was an Army radio operator. I used the Army radios. Okay. I did whatever they told me to do. So a captain or someone would come to you and say, contact this person. Yeah. Okay. And would they give you the messages, or would they then speak on the Sometime radio? Sometimes a message came in, I gave it to whoever it came in for, or they gave it to me, and I sent it out. Okay. Do you remember the message? any of the messages? Were they about troop needs for troop, or I, I don't supplies? remember the word. You don't remember any of them? Interesting. That's a long time ago. You know, it, was, it was everyday nonsense. Who paid attention? <laughs> well, you obviously did, because you took good care, good care of the troops. And you did your job. I, I, I can't help. I, I just don't remember. It's, it's a long time. It's okay. It's all right. Do you, do you remember any of the specific locations that you were? Any bases or towns that you were no, in Europe no, or I know. France? I, I just don't remember. Okay. Okay. Um, did you see any combat? You see it from a distance, yes. From a distance. Yeah, you know, I wasn't talking. They were, were they shooting all around me over my head? No. Okay. You know, it was with the troops. We moved the troops. We moved in. We, sometimes we handled, we moved the prisoners. We watched them. Sometimes we did that. You did what you were told to do. It it, it, it basically was was what you did every day. And that's, and nobody asked the question. Nobody thought it was strange. Right. They told you to do it. You did it. Right. And uh, I guess we were a little privileged because we had vehicles. We had half tracks. We had trucks. We had jeeps. It was a hell of a lot better than walking. Yes. Yes. So, uh, but I, I unfortunately, I, I think uh, the past year or two years, because of my health problems, have done a lot of damage to my memory. Okay. I just don't remember. I okay. wish I could, but I can't help you there. Well, you, you are remembering some things. 
So when you, as you travel from place to place, you said you didn't see combat. So were you more in a command place? In a command town no, or I, somewhere that no, was... No, listen, we, we saw troops. We saw, we saw dirty troops coming back. We saw fresh troops going in. Right. We carried troops. We did this. We did this. What did we do? I don't remember. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, were there casualties in your unit? Were there casualties in the in your unit? No, I don't no. think so. Maybe here and there, but they, it's very difficult to explain. I was with and without the unit. What happened, I don't know. I don't think so. Okay. Was everybody shooting at us? Once or twice I heard a bullet go overhead. That's about it. Okay. But uh, was I in deep combat? Absolutely not. You were not, you were not in the deep combat. Right. You weren't, weren't on the front lines, in other words. How close I was to it, I don't know. I know it was close enough to hear gunshots, but that's all. Okay. All right. You were not a prisoner of war, thank goodness. Um, and you, you had, you weren't awarded any medals or citations that you remember. Just what you received when you, when you returned. Yeah, you got everything that you got. They, they, they list them all on your discharge. Who knows? Okay. Um, were you involved in any um, battle planning or anything because of your radio ability? They, they say, you know, on your discharge, they say involved in such and such battle. I okay. don't know. I don't remember. Okay. It, it may sound strange to you, but uh, you did what you did every day, and that's all. Uh, I don't remember. Okay. I wish I did. Okay. Um, and you didn't sustain any injuries? No. Okay, but you you had told me earlier that you were ill. Don't ask me. I don't remember. Okay. I, I woke up. They took care of me. They took care of me in the hospital. They sent me home. I, I I don't remember. Okay. All right. No. Do you remember what hospital you were in? What country you were? Okay. Well, I know I was outside of Paris. Outside Paris. I, I was shipped home from outside Paris. Okay. Honey, wasn't it frostbite? Honey, I don't know. No, I don't know. No. Okay. okay. Um, how did you stay in touch with your family? What was the little, uh, they used to have little uh, mail things, what they call them? V-mail? V-mail? Oh. Is that it? I'm not sure. I haven't heard that term. You little letters. You sent a little, sent home little letters. And so once in a while you got to deliver it. And sometimes you got to the face. Um, so you were never able to call them. It was all by oh, communication no. with letters. Okay. Um, did you have brothers and sisters? Did you have brothers and sisters? Yes, I had a brother who was in the Air Force. He was a radio operator in the... Uh, radio operator? Don't ask me what the uh, branch, but in the Air Corps. Okay. So he was a radio operator also? Yes. At the same time, World War II? In the same war. <laughs> wow. Okay. Did you ever communicate with him, send letters to him, or was no. it too hard to find no. where he was? Did you have any other brothers or sisters? Just a brother. Okay. And is he older or younger? Yeah, an older brother. An older brother. Good. Um, what was the food like in the Army? What was the food like? That's a strange question. You ate it. <laughs> Was it gourmet cooking? No. No. <laughs> but you ate it and you lived. So you ate in the mess hall and was the food was the food pretty good? It was food. It was food. Well, you, ate, you ate when you could, where you could. Okay. You had a mess kit, you, you ate it and you washed it out and you went to the next one and hope you didn't die of poisoning. Oh, okay. So you, somehow, you sometimes had to use your mess kit to eat? Most of the times. You did? Okay. Yeah. All right. That's probably the purpose of carrying your pack when you were in basic yeah, training. Listen, we, uh, you know, you, you're asking me questions that uh, that thing may sound foolish. I didn't carry anything on my back. I had a jeep. I had, we had vehicles. You managed. What oh. did they manage? Who the hell remembers? Okay. All right. Good. Did you have enough supplies for your job? Did you have Did you have the equipment you needed for the radio and the parts uh, for well, it? I remember about my time in the army. Cold and dirty. Cold and dirty. Yeah. You know what? 
you did what everybody else did. It didn't seem strange or unusual. You did what you had to do. Yes, and you and you used your talent as a radio yeah, operator. You know, right. you, that's it. You, you did. You did what they told you to do. So, if it did, you ever have any problems with the radios not working? Were you able to fix them oh if there was God. a problem? <laughs> Half of them were junk. You were fixing yeah. them half the time, but they, they worked. You made them work. You made them work. You were yeah. able to fix them. Good. Okay. Um, did you ever feel pressure or stress? Did you ever feel stress or pressure? When I was a kid. You were a kid. <laughs> you, know, you, you don't think that way. It, you were, they kept you so busy that you just... Yeah, I guess so. I was... Just, how busy? Yeah, I would have held remembers. Yeah, remember, you've gone back a long time. I know, I know. But did, did I have time to sit around and play uh, play cards? No. No, you didn't. You yeah. didn't get to do any of that. Okay, that's that's what I'm saying. Um, yeah, how how you how you entertained yourself, how people entertained themselves. Go that way. You went that way. That's how you entertained yourself. Okay, so you didn't you didn't have times in the evenings where you saw movies or. You could play cards with people or... Okay. We always had things to do. What? I don't know. Listen. Like I got it. Uh, I picked up ammunition. Delivered ammunition. Guarded ammunition dumps. That kind of stuff. Ooh. Okay. But did I make notes about it? No. Do I remember? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. You did what, you, what they told you to do. Right. And that, that's the only game. Yes. <laughs> that they had to do or you won't get into trouble. Right. And it, 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 it was part of life. It was, it was just accepted. This was it, and that's what you did. And that's really that's all there was to it. You had your job to do, and you did it. Yeah. Did you work with many other people? I had a lot of other soldiers around me. Yes. Around around you. But I, I, you see, that's where I say I don't remember. Okay. I don't remember their names anymore. I don't. I'm forgetting their faces. It's. Okay. It happens after a while. But in other words, you weren't by yourself as a radio operator. You were part of this. Oh, part of it. And sometimes I sat in a, in, a, in, a, in a vehicle all by myself. Okay. And sometimes I was, a, you know, I had a driver, I had a gunner shooting over my head. Right. There's that and the other thing. Okay. But uh, as I said, I keep repeating it. You keep coming into the same thing. I know. Whatever they told you to do, you did. There was no I questions. Know. You didn't question it. No. You did it. You're right. Period. End of conversation. Because you were responsible. But in the in the evenings when you when you had your dinner and then you would go back to your bunk or in the mess hall or I mean, we had a, a tent, the half tent. You were in you the tent. You had a half tent and another guy had the other half. You put the two together and you had a tent that the two of you slept in, side by side. Okay. Oh, okay. So that was out in the field. Yeah. All right. And were there other people in your division oh, yeah, that were out in the, there school. with you? Okay. But it's funny. The recall is terrible. I don't know if no, you're when doing, I lost it all. You're doing really well. You're really doing well. Um, did you? So you didn't see any USO shows or any any of those things. You know, I think once. Okay. They had a traveling USO show. That we were near. Do I remember it? That's some pretty girls. Yeah, I remember that. Oh, you yes. Know. They always bought the pretty girls. That's about it. <laughs> Good. But I don't remember. Good. Um, did you ever go on leave? Maybe you got a two-day... They, they pulled the whole troop back for a couple of days. There was a... There was a... a what the hell do you call them? A PX. Okay. And you got some cigarettes and you got some, some shaving cream with this and the other but no, did I ever go on leave in Paris and see shows? No. No. Okay. No, not that kind of stuff. Not that kind of leave. Okay, so you didn't, you were you were just too busy and they, you didn't get, you did Can I say, you, you didn't think of yourself as being busy. You were doing what you were told you to do. Job. And that period, end of conversation. That's what life was about. Right. I don't remember much else. All right. So when you were pulled back and you could go into the PX, was that also a chance to take a nice warm shower and relax and sleep uh, a little on more? On rare occasions, a, right. a shower was a field shower. Yes. They set up tents and they came along with boilers 
and uh, you had to, you know, in and out in three minutes, I guess. <laughs> and that was it. But when you went back to the PX and you, they pulled you back, that was a little, that was a little nicer. You could take a shower and relax. No, no, no. PX sleep. is a PX. Right. It had nothing to do with the shower. No, no, I realized, but you said you were pulled back. That's what yeah, I asked Once in a while, it was a, a field shower, yes, once in a while, not often. Okay. Yeah, you were dirty and... No, you know, no, it, it, it was what it was. It's, it's, it's very... It's hard to explain to somebody who wasn't there. It was no, no big thing. It did, it did what you had to do. You're doing well. <laughs> did you have enough supplies as far as your no, boots? Just tell about the socks. What? How you uh, honey. Your socks. Nobody's business. He washed his socks. Wait a minute. In his helmet. Oh, you! How you washed your socks? Yeah. Honey, I didn't ask, and I'm not asking you. I, know. I hope you're not. You recorded it on. I don't care. I'll tell the story. Okay. Not you. You weren't there. Okay. She's she's reminding you about yeah, things. So that's a great story. Tell me about the socks. Look, <laughs> you're, you're out in the field. Yes. You're moving continually here, there. I don't remember. Where. Yes. But there's one thing I do remember. He had two pair of socks, and there was trench foot. Oh yeah. And you saw, you know, you saw that kind of junk. Yes. But you had two pair of socks, so you washed the pair of socks. You wrung them out as best you could. Now you didn't have a line to go drive them, and I'll wait till tomorrow morning and take them off the line. You took them and you put them against your stomach under there, and that's the way they dried, and that's the way you wore those the next day. And the next day or two later, you washed the other pair. Okay. You dried them against your against your belly. That's very clever. You made it work. I don't know where I learned it. Somebody must have showed me. Right. But that's what I did. Well, that's what I was just asking. Don't ask me where, when, or how, because I don't remember. Okay. But remember, I had a jeep, and they'd send you, take a message, or do this, or do that. I'd find them. And nobody knew what the hell. They'd, they'd sketch a map out. You know, the one thing you had to worry about is the Germans would take a, a sign on the road, and they'd turn it this way. Oh. So you always had to be very careful when you were traveling. But I went somewhere and I saw a field shower. And I stopped him. I stopped him. I told him, you, your underwear was OD colored. You know what I mean by OD yes. colored? Yes. And I was in, in those days, <laughs> I had hair. <laughs> but I will never forget taking off my shirt. And don't ask me when the last time I took a shower before that. There was the hair on my chest had grown and worked its way through the knit of my, oh, uh, with the other, with my ODs. Wow. I will never, I was so surprised that I, so I took it off and I got it, and that's it, but I always remembered it. And if you had the story. That's a wonderful story, and it shows how you didn't have an opportunity to change your clothes you and get think, new but, uniform. But the point is, you didn't think anything of it. No, you didn't, because I wasn't the were, only one that that happened to. I didn't want to say, hey, not. fellas, look at this. Right. <clears throat> That's the way it was. And that's the way it was, and you figured it out. But you did have enough of the clothing and, and clean boots and... Or Whether boots it was in, a, in my knapsack, like I do know this, I knew that one of the things you got rid of pretty quickly was your gas mask. Okay. Because the bag that the gas mask came in was great as a ditty bag to throw every, all the other junk in. Okay. So God help me if I ever needed a gas mask like that. But who the hell remember those things? You know, those little black bottles. But those, those are the little memories that are your story. That's why it's important. I don't know. Where and I'm you're going. probably not the only one that did that. Oh, like I'm you sure say about I'm the not socks. Well, that's how you figure it out. You, you do it by seeing somebody else most right. of the time. You know that. Right. So that's all I can add. And you didn't yeah. have access to washers and dryers, and you yeah. couldn't go into the I didn't have to go over to the drying machine if that's what you're talking about. Right. No. Well, and you I couldn't go to the store and I buy I remember clothes. putting the socks. Okay. You know, remember, getting washed in the morning was taking your helmet and getting a helmet full of water, and everything came out of that. You shaved, you brushed your teeth, you washed your socks, right? and then you went off from there. And you always had your helmet with you. Right. That's your always, that's your always have. Yes, you had to have that with you. End of conversation. Turn it off. Good. No, no, I'm not quite done here. Um... Do you remember any particularly humorous or un humorous or unusual events no. with any of the your fellow servicemen? Um, so there weren't any pranks you pulled. Do you do you rem what did you think of the officers and your fellow servicemen? 
I had nothing to compare it to. Okay. So whatever it was, it was. You know, I couldn't say, hey, in the last outfit day, my officer did such and such. I didn't have a last outfit. Okay. So you, again, I, you did what you had to do. Right. Do you feel that they respected you and what, if they asked you to do something, you felt that they respected you and they knew that you would oh, yeah. do what you yeah, were told? There, there, was, that, there, there was nothing wrong about that. Good. You did what you had to do. Good. And what about your fellow servicemen? Did you, you must have met guys from all over the country, right? Yeah. They, look, uh, what am I going to say? I met Hicks. I met, I met guys who didn't know what a shower was. Yeah. Okay. You know, you, you think that's crazy, but I met, there were men there who'd never seen a shower before. Right. Yes. And you grew up outside New York City, and you were meeting people that were from yeah, the country? I, I or New York City boy, yeah. All over, yeah. Yeah. You know, I lived in an apartment, an apartment house, a bathroom with a shower and a flush toilet. Right. And everything else, but you did meet guys who came from the Midwest or the Southwest, who were really real farmers. We call them hicks, but they were farmers. Right. Did you make any friendships, too? Yeah, you, you made friends, but uh, I don't know. They, they Just never. when you had some time and chatting yeah. with them and where are you from and that type of thing. Good. Did you keep a journal? Did you write down anything? Okay. No. Um, where were you when your service ended? Somewhere in Europe. I don't remember. You were in Europe. Do you remember that day? Can you tell me about that? Did someone come to you and say, "Okay, private life, you're you're finished"? Oh, you had you had gotten ill, so yeah. you that's the way you came home. Okay, and then so you were at a hospital outside Paris. Yes. And they discharged you from there. No, they they sent me home. They, they sent, sent you me home. home on a hospital ship. You came on a hospital ship. Okay, all right. And then you went to a hospital in. It, yeah. Near New York, or was it an Jersey, army hospital? In Jersey, no, somewhere in, in Jersey. Jersey. Was it an army hospital? Oh, yeah. Okay. And then, um, so you were discharged from there when you got well? Yes. When you recovered. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, what was your homecoming like when you got out and going back home? I was glad, was my mother glad to see me, yes. You know, I, do we throw a party? No, you know, it, you didn't do those things in those days. Right. Times were different. Was the war still going on when you got out? Was what? Was the war over when you got out after you were after you were ill? No, you know, it may have, it may have been close. Okay. I know they were they were bringing guys back from from England and sending them to the, to Japan. Okay. Yeah, but. Uh, and was your brother home by then? When you when you got out and you went home? No. 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 Okay. I he came think, later. I think he came home very shortly thereafter. Okay. Good. Um, what did you do the days and weeks afterwards? Did you go to, Did you go to school on the GI Bill or go back to your job? Any job? No, I, you had? I went to work. Um, you know, for myself. Uh, you know, when I when I say I went to work for myself, I got a job. You got a job. Okay. Um, what did you do when you got out? What was your job? What was your work? I was a clerk in a uh, in a veiling company, French veiling. Huh. But, uh, and then did you did you go back? Did you go to school on the GI Bill? Did you go to college? I went to school at night, not on the GI Bill. I went to Columbia at night. It was too much. Okay. It didn't last long. Okay. And what did you study at Columbia? I don't remember. You took some classes. Okay. Um, did you, so what, what did you do with your life's work after you were finished? What was your occupation? I became a salesman. You were a salesman. Okay. And I worked my way up from there. With the same, with one company? Yeah, no. Two companies. You were with two companies. Okay. Did you travel a lot as a salesman? No, lo no. local, you know, uh, where my car would take me. Okay. In the New York area? Yeah. Pretty much. Did you make any close friendships in the service? Anyone that you... No. No? So you, you haven't been in touch with anybody or gone back for reunions or anything? No, I don't think so. No, you didn't? Okay. 
Um, okay, so we talked about your career after. Um, did, how did your military experience influence your thinking about war or the military in general? You say that again loud. How did your military experience affect influence your thinking about war or the military in general? I can't say I thought of it that way. Okay. I mean, I know damn well the Army had to, could have done a better job. But that's what they did, and that's what you had, and we won the war. Okay. End of conversation. Do you feel it was it was a good experience for you to have served? Do you, do you oh, I, 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 as I look back, I, I mean, you had no other choice. That was the experience you had. Right. But I would, there was a lot to be remembered from that experience, and be glad that you had it. Good. Good. You learn a lot about human nature. Yes. And living with others and yeah. doing your job and do what you're told to do and you survived. Yeah. Learned how to clean your socks. <laughs> I love that story. That's a good one. <laughs> okay. Are you? I, I, did you join any veteran administrations like the VFW or Veterans of Foreign? No. Or any of those? Okay, you don't participate. Um, and how do you think your service and experience affected your life? I knew damn well you had to help yourself. Okay. Like, I guess that, listen, I, I came out of the Army, you know, you have to remember the times were different. Yes. A buck, was, whoa, you, you could buy half the world for a dollar and a half. And that's what you had to do. You had to hustle. You had to make a living. I didn't have the chance to, to, to play around. I had to make a living. I Whatever I brought home, half of it went to my mother to support the house. My mother was a widow. Okay. It, uh, you know, life was different. That's all. It, when you went to, when you took a girl out for 50 cents, you went out and you had a Chinese uh, dinner. And they were glad you had the 50 cents to pay for it. And the world, the world slowly changed. What the world would have been like if we didn't win the war, God, uh, God help us. Right. But uh, this was this and that was that. And you got older and you got smarter. You hoped. Yes. And that's all it was to it. And when did you meet your wife? This is not my wife. I know. But I know. My wife was a local girl. And... I, you know, I knew her to say hello to and uh, first name, and somehow or other, it became serious. Did you know her before the war? Did you write to her when you were overseas? Oh, I knew her. I knew her from the, she was a local girl from the oh, right. Washington Heights. You know, I knew her to say hello. Right. That was about it. Oh, you didn't write to her when you no. were when you were there. Mostly family. No. Okay. That's the whole story. Okay. Nothing else you to add? You grew up, you grew old, older, you grew a little wiser. You hoped. <laughs> you hoped. Okay. Well, thank and you I, so much. I was fortunate. I had yes. a talent. I was a salesman. I was a good salesman. I made a good living. I moved up the ladder. Right. And that was it. Well, thank you for your service and sharing your story. I really appreciate it, Mr. Lennon. My pleasure.